So you've probably managed to figure out exactly where I am. I'm, I'm at a very famous location along the Suffolk coast at Southwold. And um, basically last night I couldn't figure out where to go. And I've got a few workshops coming up here. So I thought um, it'd probably be a good idea for me to, to come along and, um, and get my eye in as well. Uh, forecast looked, looked pretty nice. Uh, Lots of high cloud, but as you can see, there's a, there's a massive bank of cloud on the horizon. So I knew I was going to have to make the most of the, the dawn light. I could see the, the, the few breaks in there might um, give me some nice reflective light before the, before the sun came up. And that was the case, actually. I was going to go and look to shoot amongst the grass, um, as I've done before here, because um, it's, it's very challenging. And it's really good for, for helping you, um, you know, look a little bit closer and find out compositions. But when I got here, it was pitch black. And by the time I'd sort of had a bit of a wander, I could just start to see this lovely band of reflective light hitting um, this small selection of the beach huts. So I quickly decided that this was going to be where the first shot of the morning is. But I didn't want to just take a stand-up generic shot of the beach huts looking across. So I tried to look for something a little bit different. And obviously because it's the morning and there's been a bit of wind overnight, the footprints have turned into almost um, ripples in the sand. And what I, what I quickly realized was if I got down low and tilted the camera forward, I could emphasize those ripples as leading lines. And by also tilting the camera forward, it helps make the beach huts stand out, makes them sort of taller, rather than if you tilt it level or upwards, it'll, it'll squash them. And there's not much going on in the sky, so I wanted to make the, the ripples in the sand and the beach huts the main focal point of the composition. But this, what, what, I re what really drew me to this image was the reflective light and just how it was casting along the, the ripples of the sand and the beach huts. I'm just looking at the raw file here, and I can just see this really, really nice contrast where on the right-hand side of these ripples, there's a nice bit of light catching, and on the left, they're just in shadow. So it's going to really help lead the eye through the image. And then what I was doing really was just playing with the polarizer to get varying amounts of um, reflections on the beach huts. And then what I can do in post-production is just pick out what I like. Maybe I don't like the reflections on the first hut, but I do on the, the third and the fourth. And it might find it just helps lead the, the eye through the image. So, you know, it's, it's always about thinking ahead. So while I'm taking this shot, I know, um, on location, you know, you need to do it right and get it right, but it's only half the job. The, the second half is when you get it back at the computer and, and what you do with the image, how you make the image your own. So, it's not a bad start. Um, unfortunately, there's a couple of plastic bags um, tied up on the, the beach huts, so it's a bit unfortunate, but not much I can do about it, and I'm sure they're there for a reason, so I don't want to take them off. But, um, yeah. For a first image of the day, no complaints at all. I think, as I said earlier, with the band of cloud on the horizon, I'm not going to be blessed with any, any lovely golden light as we were in the video a couple of weeks back at Westleton. So I think rather than run about trying to look amongst the grass, I might just stick around these beach huts and just try and get a bit creative, really. Um, there's a gentle breeze, so I might be able to use that um, along with, you know, thinking about my shutter speed to to create some nice, nice, you know, patterns. So with the beach huts in the background, so I'll I'll, I'll give it a go. <laughs> no promises because <laughs> I haven't tried it, but um, yeah, no complaints, no complaints at all.
I often find when you're trying to look for something a bit more unique and individual, um, you're best to use, not always, but most of the time, you're best to use a longer focal length. So immediately I decided after the first shot walking up here that I was gonna put the 70 to 200 on and just try and pick out little bits of interest and patterns and shapes that I like. And um, although I speak to you now, the sun has just peeked through a gap in the clouds. Um, a few minutes ago, well, not a few minutes ago, probably about 15, 20 minutes ago when I was looking, uh, there was no light and it was just a very soft, well, I say no light, it was just a very soft pastely light. And I was looking along the beach huts and what I what I found was this one here with the um, you know the party ribbons and and flags on it uh, the, the, the the blues and the whites matched really well with the um, with the sand and the grass and the sea so I decided to focus just on this one individual beach hut and it also works quite nicely because there's a bit of separation between each beach hut so I could um, you know isolate it basically in my composition and I was fiddling about with compositions and what you'll notice is there's two little spikes on the top of the roof and you can either be very careful and come a bit lower and straight and then you just end up with one triangle of the roof and the spike or you can come up and left and right slightly and you can give the beach hut a bit of depth so you can actually see the, um, the felt roof and the spikes what I decided to do was to zoom right in. I think I'm almost at 200 mil. I can't, I can't remember now, but, um, and I just lift, shifted up and left slightly. And it just allowed me to allow, it just allowed me to give the beach hut that little bit of depth. And what I've done is I've used a really shallow depth of field. I'm at F4 and it's roughly 200 mil. That gives you, you know, a pretty shallow depth of field. And I've used the, the grass in the foreground, uh, but it's soft focus, just to just to anchor the image. In fact, as I as I talk about it, I'm gonna put it up on the screen so I know what I'm saying. But what I haven't done is used the whole beach hut. I've cut the beach hut off roughly, probably halfway down the right side of the hut, and because I'm allowed the beach hut to appear more on the left side. It just, just in my, it just creates a nice, pleasing, balanced composition. And with that soft pastel light, just as it started to poke through, it did just very subtly illuminate the grass in the foreground. And what I've done is been careful to just frame the grass up so it doesn't go above the blue. So the grass, where it's thinning out at the top, it doesn't go into the white of the hut and get lost. Um, I'm very conscious that I won't be including the horizon. I don't want the horizon in it. I don't think it adds anything to the image. And what I've done to really simplify the image is um, use the Lee Big Stopper. And that was giving me an exposure time roughly around one minute 15. So it just helped to smooth that water out so, uh, ever, so, ever so slightly. And yeah, it's, it's, it's not something I would usually shoot, but um, you know, I'm using this morning to experiment and just see what I can come up with, but I, I, I really like it. Um, I've shot throughout as the light has come up. I think I much prefer it without uh, just a very subtle light on the grass, but um, we shall see. But yeah, image number two. <laughs> yeah, something different, but I'm pleased with it. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna to have to call it a day for this morning. The light is up now and it's, it's really harsh, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to get any more images. But um, hopefully I've got a couple that I'll be quite pleased with. I really hope the first one with the, um, the ripples in the sand as the foreground and the, the reflective light is gonna come out just how I'm 
hoping it will because that light really was was stunning and the second composition was something a bit different for me really i really like the pastel tones and the um sort of more abstract composition so um yeah something a bit different so it's, it's always nice to experiment but um just wanted to offer a quick reminder that my 2020 calendar is still available for pre-order all pre-orders come with free shipping and a choice of one of three a4 or 8x10 fine art prints so um if you're looking to gift the calendar or you'd like uh, to gift the print and have the calendar for yourself then uh, please head over to my website i'll pop a link in the description below uh, where you can place the order but yeah that's about it for now so um thank you very much for watching and until next time i shall see you later